Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to City View, and uh, welcome to our online service for today. We're we're here on the set from our uh, production that we did this uh, this year. Uh, it was called Believe. You can look for it on our YouTube channel, and uh, we had a wonderful time together. We were happy to be able to have a live audience this year. And uh, if you know what the difference is, go back and watch last year's Christmas thing where we did everything outside because of COVID. We weren't supposed to be together inside. So anyhow, it's fun. And it was an opportunity to lift up the name of Jesus and just worship him. And so uh, we're here today. We're just going to spend some time just focus on the Christmas season. It's Boxing Day. And so Dallas, why don't you lead us in a, a couple of uh, songs and then we'll just spend a little bit of time sharing for today. Amen, amen. This one's just joy to the world. we believe 
situation is, no matter what we're facing in life, Lord, we can put our trust in you. We can believe you, God, for breakthroughs. We can believe you for miracles. We can believe you to change the impossible into an, a possibility, Lord, in our lives, Father, and we thank you and praise you for that. Lord, I thank you that you care about every single one of us. You love us so much that you sent Jesus, and we celebrate his birth at this time of the year, but but most importantly, we celebrate the whole purpose for why Jesus came and gave his life so that we can have hope, so that we can have life, so that we can have joy, so that we can have peace, so that we can have all of the things that are talked about in the Christmas season. That's why Jesus came. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you today for that. Lord, we give you the glory. Lord, I thank you, especially today. For all the things that you're doing in people's lives, Lord, I thank you for last weekend and the and the opportunity to, to do our presentation and to just encourage people to reach out to you. Father, even now, even now, reach out to them in their homes and touch their lives and encourage them, Father, that they can trust you. They can put their trust in you because 
In you, God, you never waver. You, you're never, the Bible says you never slumber or sleep. You're always on call. You're always there for us. You're always there to help us through every situation. So, Father, today, as we celebrate you and as we celebrate Jesus, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And we thank you for your goodness in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Dallas. Thank you for leading us. And uh, it's so good to be together here. We're just going to spend a, just a few minutes just kind of sharing. And uh, we, you know, for those of you uh, that have been uh, following, um, today would have been the uh, f the fourth candle, and uh, uh, that the fourth candle in the Advent series is the peace candle. And uh, you can see the progression that takes place there. We talked about having hope, and when hope begins to stir in our hearts, then we, we build up the faith. We stand in faith. We say, I believe. I believe that you can do it for me, God. I believe that you can do those things in my life. And so we go from hope to faith and then to joy. The joy comes when we start to see those breakthroughs, those answers to prayer. And and then the last candle is the peace candle. And uh, just, uh, you know, what a joy it is to be able to celebrate Jesus because you know, the, the peace, the, I think of the verses in, uh, I think of the story in Luke, uh, actually, and we had talked about this last week, actually, and we had uh, talked about it from Mary's perspective that, you know, when, when the angels came to visit her, and they brought the news, and, you know, she went from, you know, there was hope, they were hoping for a Messiah, she was, you know, one of the Jewish people, and they were, they were hoping for a Messiah, and then when they heard news that there was going to be a Messiah coming, then then uh, she grabbed a hold of it and she told them, yeah, I believe whatever you say, whatever words are come from God, I believe those things and I and I whatever it is, I believe it. That's what Mary that's what Mary's words were. And then there was a joy that came up inside of her and as she uh, you know began to to have this baby forming inside of her that was the baby Jesus, she got that joy. But you know what the the fulfillment of that was the peace that came then the the final step being the peace and it's funny because we read the verse uh, verse 10 last week where it said do not be afraid i bring you good news this was the okay sorry this was the angels talking to the shepherds in this case they they in luke chapter 2 we see where the angels came they visited the shepherds in the field they were out watching and it said do not be afraid i bring you good news that will cause great joy. So now all of a sudden the, the shepherds that were out in their fields, now they got excited. They got excited about the potential of this new Messiah that was coming, the Messiah that was going to be born and bring life and hope to the world, right? And uh, and then it, it goes on, if you read in that passage in Luke chapter 2, and there's a good Christmas story. If you haven't done it yesterday on Christmas Day, uh, why not take the time today on Boxing Day to do it? But grab your Bible and read Luke chapter 2, because uh, then it goes on, it says, after the uh, angels were there, a whole a uh, whole host of them, like a, 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 like a big, I would assume, lots, lots and lots. I don't know how many a host is, but, you know, it's lots of angels appeared, and they were all singing. And guess what they were singing? They were singing glory. This is verse 14. If you're looking it up in your Bible, verse 14, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests or the King James says peace and goodwill to all men. You know, God wants the best for us and he wants us to go through those steps. He wants us to come to a place of having that you know, that overwhelming peace that just comes, you know, no matter what you're going through. Mm. When you put your trust in God, there's just a supernatural peace. It's, it is a promise of God. And, and we, see, we see it in the Word. We see it in, in so many situations. I, I, I always think of the verse in Philippians 4. Six and seven, we know it well. Uh, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Mm -hmm. And the peace of God, it is a supernatural peace that comes, it, which transcends all understanding. That's the way New, New International says it. It, it. it goes beyond our natural understanding. Yeah, it's, 
It's not normal. It is, it is something supernatural. That peace that comes in our lives, it will guard your heart and your mind. And those are the two things that, you know, we get under attack, right? We, we might get in strife about stuff or we might get, you know, just stressed. We might get you know, totally out of ourselves about things. But God gives us a calm, sound mind and that peace in our hearts. And when he puts it in, it, there's no explaining it. They, they, you know, I mean, can you guys think of examples as we're here today? Um, you know, maybe Pastor Gene, an example of where that supernatural peace, like there's no explanation for it. You know, a supernatural peace either came and sustained or comforted you in a situation. Can you give us an example there? Well, I guess there's so many times in life, but <laughs> this one is not a, a life and death situation. But I know some people have been facing those things when you're going into a surgery or something like that. It's it's a big thing. And we've heard often how people just have a peace, right? Mm -hmm. An unexplainable peace in the middle of it. But for me... Um, last week as we were preparing the production <laughs> you know you'd think that after having a year off and not doing it it would be easier right <laughs> but for some reason i found it harder <laughs> to just get back into it and remember all the details and you know you have so many lists and it's just like ah and i mean i actually was like i don't know if i can do this and i only had one day where it was like ah but you know what i had some close friends and I know family um, were praying and honestly I could feel those prayers it was a peace that just covered me like a blanket and where I should have you know had a day where I just was not in peace I just felt peaceful <laughs> and I don't know if you guys you know felt that way as well but um, there is a lot to remember when we put these things together and you know, you want it. You want to do your best because you want the message to come forward, and you don't want things to be missed and it to, you know, not not minister to people's hearts. So, of course, it's important. So that was special for me, just to feel that peace. Yeah, that's so awesome. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I love it. I, I, you know, I sense that too. Uh, you know, just and I mean, as yeah, we were working on the details, and it's like. Ah! Are we going to make it? Are we going to get this done right? But then, yeah, there was just that piece. How about you, Dallas? Have you got a, an example of where? Yeah, uh, probably. In, <laughs> so peace under pressure in like the urgent things is kind of an obvious one that, that can happen. But um, I don't know. I, I find, and uh, it's funny, yesterday, uh, or I guess this would have been uh, not yesterday, Christmas, but uh, just before Christmas, we were meeting with um, some of my wife Portia's family, and and they said uh, you two are both so joyous all the time when you're around. <laughs> and uh, and Portia made the comment. She said, "Well, Dallas is like 24/7 joy. I'm like, I'm like on when we're together." <laughs> and uh, and it was an interesting comment because one, it's just kind of a funny reality of being parents of two young children, and and uh, my wife does so much. You know, I. I get a break because I go to work. Most people think work is like hard. Work is easy. Parenting is hard. Uh, and there's more hard work going on for my wife than there is for me any day of the week. So I could care less what happens at work. She's putting in more effort. And But it's funny because um, I realize that that's actually peace. That's the ability to wake up on no sleep, two hours of sleep, three hours of sleep to a screaming child and walk in calm and tell them, I love you. I'm here for you. What can I do for you? Um, it's peace and the ability to, and I, I don't want to mess up the reference, so I'm not going to give it because I have two scripture references stuck in my head, but um, the verse is, cast all your cares upon him for he cares about you. And that's not just big things. That's not just a virus or a surgery or a danger. It's everything. It's all those little things. And so, um, you know, sometimes the, the weight of life uh, piles up on us and the Christmas banquet is just one more of those things that we were preparing for as a church but there's weekly you know responsibilities and and the thing is that that's just one aspect of our lives we are all parents husbands and wives sons and daughters first and foremost and that should never get mixed up that family comes first and then you know your other duties job whatever and uh, but i know that there are people who they let the weight of their commitments at even church 
affect their relationship or they let their weights of the work that they're doing nine to five affect the way they parent and i just believe that that's god's peace in my life and i i don't know it, you know it's good it's my my parents teaching me as a young child that i'm supposed to cast my cares upon him and i used to pray that prayer before basketball games i used to pray that prayer before sports activities before tests i'd say god i cast all my cares upon you for you care about me and this is important to me today and i feel like when you do that the holy spirit shows up with peace amidst the chaos and you can walk through a situation that for most people would break their back for most people they don't have the capacity to handle but you somehow walk through with a smile on your face and it's and then people ask you they say aren't you stressed I say why would i be stressed what do i have to be stressed about my eternity is is secure but what do i really have to be stressed about the creator of the universe loves me he told me that he tells me that every day I have an amazing wife and an amazing family. Why would I be stressed about forgetting something for the banquet? Like, yeah, that's, we want to do a good job, of course, but that's not worth it to lose peace over. And I just feel like that is the, a way that I've seen it consistently be in my life. So it's not maybe urgencies, it's, it's the chronic peace that's shown up in my life, which I'm very thankful for. And we actually need that. <laughs> right, and we need sure it we in do. the big yep, things. Absolutely, yep. so true, Dallas. We oh, need it good. every day because every day has its challenges. Amen. Yeah, yep. yeah. There, yeah. It, it, like the the Bible says, like don't take thought for tomorrow. In other words, don't be anticipating what's going to happen tomorrow. Like today has enough trouble all of its own, <laughs> right? And so yeah. we need to be just yeah, like you said, casting our cares. You know, letting letting God you know, give us that peace through those kinds of situations. I know for me, and I, you know, when I think of just a supernatural peace, when when all of this started, when the thing started with COVID, like at first, at first I was like, okay, well, you know, and I've told told our people a few times, ah, oh, well, a few weeks, this will be all over and we'll move on with it, right? Well, that didn't happen. And then all of a sudden there was all of these regulations and rules and they, they weren't allowed to meet as churches and everything. And I started to take the cares of that uh, on me. And it's like, okay, I need to pray this one through. And people, please pray for me. And I asked the people from church and even friends to pray for, for me. Because in the role as the pastor, as the lead pastor, I, it was almost like I felt like I was making life and death decisions. You know, whether to meet, whether to have church, whether to wear masks, and all of these things that have, that have come about as a part of the regulations. And... And yet, you know, when I went to God and I said, God, how do I lead our church through all of this? There was just a supernatural peace that came. And we just, we knew, and, and we can look back now after 21 months it is, or two, you know, I mean, pretty soon it'll be a whole year that we've been, or two, a whole two years that we've been dealing with this. But I can look back and I can see where God just directed some of our steps. And you know what? You're directed by the peace. You know, when you get out of peace, like then it's like, ah! what do i do you know you, you 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 don't make the right decisions but when that god's supernatural peace is in your heart then you can just focus in and say okay god i know this is where we're supposed to go i know this is what we're supposed to do you know there's a verse that we've quoted i've quoted it almost every week now in this advent series with our our, our christmas series and I'm going to quote it once more today. Now I want you to consider, you know, adding peace onto the list, right? We, we did hope, we did faith, we did joy, and, and today peace. And it's this, it's Romans 15, 13. And uh, I pray that the God, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him and trust in that situation is because you have faith in god you have confidence in him but the joy and the peace that comes then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the holy spirit it's when the holy spirit is working in our lives when he's working in each of our lives when we allow him to bring that supernatural peace to us that is when it, it's just there's no explanation it is supernatural peace that's all there is to it Amen. 
you know, as we close today, we just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and just a blessed supernatural Christmas season. Enjoy your family time. Dallas talked about it already. But, um, you know, for us as a church, we decided to do online for Boxing Day. And uh, so we're just, we just, as we close today, I just want to pray for everybody that, that that supernatural peace of God would just be in your household today and, and actually every day going forward into the new year. I mean, I, you know, there are people that are afraid of the new year and what it holds, but I'm not. I have that peace. I'm excited about where God is taking us. I'm excited about what we're going to see God do in people's lives in 2022. But for today, let's just cherish this moment as part of the Christmas season. Father, I thank you and I praise you that your supernatural peace comes to every one of us, Lord. And as we, as we gather together in our homes or wherever we are today, Lord, let each person just take an opportunity just to stop and say, God, we believe. Just come and fill us with your supernatural peace today. Lord, I know that you have wonderful things in store for us, Lord. And we can get caught up in the world. We can get caught up in the, in the, in the shopping, in the Christmas things, in the lights, in the presents, and everything. But Father, let us just take time today just to be in your presence and experience that supernatural peace that comes in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And you know, we don't like to go through any service without giving an opportunity for people. Maybe maybe you don't have that relationship. Maybe you're lacking that peace in your life right now. You know what? If you'll just accept what Jesus has done for you. He didn't just come as a baby. He lived his life. He fulfilled his purpose. He went to the cross. He died, and then he rose again so that all of us will have life, have promise, have hope, have a future. And that's what it's all about. And I want to just encourage you today, just stop and take a minute and just say, Jesus, you know, I, I don't understand it all maybe, but I believe that you died for me. I accept what you did for me on the cross, and I want to be your child. Just make me new. Make me whole again in Jesus' name. Just pray a simple prayer like that, and God will come, and he will fill you. He will fill you with a peace. I, I've heard that so many times from people that, you know, their life was uh, it was chaotic and stressful and when they got when they got born again we call it when they accepted Jesus as their personal savior it's just like this this supernatural change took place in their life you can have that too and we want that for you you know god loves you so so much and at city view every week we remind people that you know our our vision our purpose our desire as a church is to see everyone discover real love and learn to live their life with purpose god bless you and thank you for watching today have a wonderful day and we will see you in the new year